What's going on guys? Welcome to Clay's Coins, here to bring you some information, education, and better understanding of cryptocurrency and the stock market. I believe confidence creates confidence, and the more you learn, the more we can live. Today we're going to be talking about some financial stocks that I think can get through this year and uh, make you quite a bit of money, even with the Fed raising rates and uh, you know the rate hikes that people are talking about this year and next year. Financials have historically done very well, so we'll look at some today. Before we do, go ahead and hit the notification bell, like the video, subscribe, um, do everything so you never miss an opportunity to miss money. And uh, if you didn't know, it really helps out. Um, one of the YouTube, one of the things the YouTube algorithm looks for is if people are watching the video, if they're subscribing to the channel, if they're coming back to watch more, and especially if they like. So go ahead and smash that like button. I want to get more likes on this video than we've ever gotten before. I want to get at least a hundred. So let's go ahead and make that uh, dream a reality. Get, hit the like button down below, and uh, let's get right into this list. Hey guys, I'm over here. <laughs> Switched it up today because we're going to be looking at uh, tip ranks for most of the video while I'm talking about it. So, as you can see, the first one we're getting into is Goldman Sachs, uh, ticker symbol GS. Uh, the financial stocks are going to do very well this year. They historically have whenever um, the Fed is aggressively combating inflation. Um, banks are going to, people are going to earn more money by keeping their money in banks. Thus, people are going to have more incentive to put their money in the banks meaning financial institutions, tend to do well during times of um, inflation combatance, which is what we're looking at as of right now. Goldman Sachs is probably one of my um, top picks. It's, you know, I'd say definitely because it's here. Top three pick this year, Goldman Sachs would be. Goldman Sachs actually has earnings coming out tomorrow. If you're watching this uh, video on the 18th, it's today. Their earnings report is. This is a net little estimation. That's why I had it pulled up first. We'll get into the uh, analyst forecast. So as you can see here, currently it's trading at 380.94. This is after market close. This has been uh, during the three-day three weekend. Hope you all have enjoyed your holiday, by the way. And as you can see here, we have some upsides of 576, a low estimate of 416. And not many people are saying that. It's a moderate buy. $477 is a 25% upside, and that's looking like your average. So these as i said these financials are going to do very well a 25 percent upside for the average is a little high in my opinion i don't know if you'll pull a 25 percent but these are going to be very very good places that you can almost guarantee some sort of profit throughout the year and should do well the next one we're looking at is citigroup citigroup ticker symbol c that's a hard one it's currently trading at 66.93 and uh, you know this one is more affordable it didn't do as well in the year of 2021 as some of the, some of the other ones uh, that's why it's at, sitting at the price it is right now but you know especially if buying and owning a full share of something is something attractive to, to you that's something you look for um, if you didn't know I'm sure you do but if you didn't you can buy fractional shares on many different brokerages uh, Robinhood, Webull, Moomoo, uh, Fidelity, Public, Almost any of them you can buy fractional shares on most companies. Some companies, they don't allow you to. Some brokerages don't, but most do, and uh, you can enable the option sometimes to do it. So just because something is $400 doesn't mean you have to pay $400 for the share of it. You could pay 100 at a time and own a quarter share. You could pay $20 at a time and own a 20th of it, you know? It, there's the... They're very flexible with how they're able to get your money, as you would probably guess. So Citigroup is cheaper. You could get, pick up a couple shares of this for as much as you know one or two shares of the others on our list. You could get quite a few of the Citigroup. Um, the highs are 120. I don't know if I see it almost doubling this year. That's big. The low is 67. It's sitting at 66.93. So the downside, you're pretty much already at it. That's why it's really it's right here. It's a great buy point. It's in right at the floor, as we like to call it. It may drop into the basement, but it's right at the floor right now, and I think it has a lot of potential. It's a cheap one you can grab up, and it should do very well this year. J.P. Morgan is going to round out the list for the legacy financials. Legacy, if you weren't sure, legacy just means the older ones. Um, you'll hear the legacy brokerage a lot, comparing like Fidelity or TD Ameritrade to uh, Robinhood or Webull. It's just the ones that have been around for a while and have been doing this for a while are referred to as the legacy ones because they've essentially built a legacy. You know, it's nothing new. It's not a startup, nothing like that. So JP Morgan is at a great buy point at 157.89. The uh, A lot of the analysts on Wall Street have it up to 181.41. The average, that's their average. As high as 210, as low as 141. I'm not sure I'll see the one, we'll see the 141, 
but you never know you know be prepared not surprised um expect the worst hope for the best is another one that's a little you know pessimistic but it's it is real reality but I, you know as you can see moderate buy right here 17 ratings 10 of which are saying buy six hold one sell so almost everyone's saying buy i think a clean 5 to 15% return this year is almost a guarantee with JP Morgan and you know the only thing that would keep that back is if you have a big big push in the crypto market and the only reason i say that in you know in regards to these you know JP Morgan Citigroup and Goldman Sachs the ones that i've just talked about is they are the legacy financials and what people do to combat inflation or he to hedge against it is they invest in cryptocurrency and especially in store of value tokens one of which is a pretty big one i don't know if you've heard of it but bitcoin is a store of value token so when you have something like bitcoin which almost completely controls the entire crypto market that in ethereum bitcoin much more than ethereum though if bitcoin does something 70 percent of the crypto market is going to instantly react to it so when people are going to put money into crypto maybe you have a big bitcoin run up that's going to take away because you're going to see a better return on your money putting it into cryptocurrency store values rather than the legacy financial institution store values I will take the time real quick guys to say that this is not financial advice. This is not an indication or suggestion to buy, hold, or sell any cryptocurrency or stock um, discussed on this in this video or any on this channel. Uh, watch out for spam by the way. You know, if you see any people in any comments on any channel talking about uh, Telegram or a WhatsApp or anything like that, I nor any YouTuber that I watch or talk to have uses the WhatsApp or anything like that. That's all spam, it's scam. Don't talk to those people or anything like that, but I'm just telling you guys what I would do. These are all what, you know, Clay's looking at and when, you know, buy points, if I discuss something like that, those are my buy points or what I think a good buy point would be. I'm not going to tell you guys straight up to buy something, but I'm going to give you guys the education and information and so you can have a better understanding of these cryptos and these stocks that we discuss. All right, now we're taking a little bit of a segue, but still staying on track. So I'm going to be showing you guys some nuanced uh, fintech plays, which is, you know, all that is is financial tech. So you can, these two are great examples of it. PayPal being the first one, ticker symbol PYPL. And so you can have your tech companies in your stock portfolio. You can have your financials. You can have your fintech. And you can kind of have this hybrid foundation, if you will, in your portfolio that is a perfect combination of preservation for diversification, but also the consolidation for growth because you're, you know, you're combining and kind of, you don't have to pick and choose one sector when you kind of have these hybrid ones, which can do very well as tech companies, but also can do very well as financials. PayPal being one of them. The price for PayPal as of right now, aftermarket, is 178.42. Um, the average analyst sees a 44% upside in the next 12 months, up to 258.52, as high as 342 we're seeing right here. You know, any forecast or prediction should be taken with a grain of salt. No one has a crystal ball. No one can predict the future. If so, why would they tell you? <laughs> they would take all the money for themselves, you know what I mean? So, don't, if anyone is telling you they're uh, going to make you a bunch of money, they're trying to sell you something because they'd be making themselves that money instead. So PayPal make, makes this list or, you know, makes this video, especially because they've been around for a long time. I've, rem I've seen PayPal for a decade or more at this point. I've had a PayPal account and, uh, you know, it's a, done an excellent job at doing a couple things. It's stayed relevant while keeping up with the times and innovating for the future. Any of those tasks in and of themselves are hard for a company to do and perform well without crumbling, let alone all three of those simultaneously as it's progressing and taking on new ventures. And that's what PayPal has done. It's done it very well. A lot of people, including myself, do believe companies like this are the future of banking, the future of finance. And once we move forward, you know, more and more into the future and with technolo technology advancing in a way that is absolutely unprecedented over the last couple decades, um, you won't have the legacy financials anymore. This will be your financials. And once we move to that area, you're going to wish you had kept your eye on the fintech plays like this one and the next one. Last one on our list and the second fintech play we're going to be looking at is Block, formerly known as Square, ticker symbol SQ. 
Block is one of Jack Dorsey's companies, um, Jack Dorsey being the former CEO and the founder of Twitter. Uh, Block owns Cash App, which is a wildly popular cash, send cash sending application, which has been doing more and more, um, you know, similar to PayPal as we just discussed, and Block Square these companies are just constantly looking ahead. They're never complacent. They're never sitting and looking on what they want to sell right now. They're constantly looking and planning for 5, 10, 15, 20 years out. It's crazy, and it's really cool to see these things happen. But Cash App is now selling crypto. They sell stocks, different things like that, which is exactly what Jack Dorsey, if you didn't know, has a huge interest in Bitcoin. He has a huge interest in cryptocurrency. That's why he changed the name from Square to Block. A lot of people are rumoring. I'm not sure if he's confirmed that, but it makes perfect sense when you think about it. Um, block being the blockchain that cryptocurrency is, that's a huge term in the crypto world. And he is a diehard Bitcoin fan. I'll actually pull up an article here about him starting something to do with Bitcoin soon. But Square, if you didn't know, is the really cool device that allows you to pay with your credit or debit card. And you can scan it or swipe it or insert it on uh, pretty much iPads and other tablets like that at mom and pop shops. Well, that device in itself is Square. So Block owns that. They own Cash App. And Cash App, if you don't know what that is, it's just like Venmo if you've heard of it. So it, you know, it's a lending application. It's everything to do with these financials in a huge sector, but moving towards a uh, future in the metaverse, a future in on the blockchain, a future with cryptocurrency widely accepted, which is really brilliant to see. One hundred and thirty-three dollars twenty-nine cents is the current trading price, with the average being two hundred and sixty-five dollars and forty-three cents. Yeah, I was gonna say it. I was just saving the best for last. 99% upside, and that is on the average. If you're looking towards the high estimates, we're talking about 360. On the low, we're looking at 190. This is so undervalued right now. This is what you would look at as a price, you know, right up front, just one dimensionally. This is a undervalued stock it, in everyone's estimates. The average it should be trading at right now or in the next 12 months is 265.43. People are saying it could be get down at, at, as low as 190. Moderate buy, I mean, we are looking at a absolute banger of a stock. When your lowest projection is a huge percentile up, upside and the average, keeping in mind, you know, there are bears that are analyzing this too. Your average is an almost 100% increase. This is definitely something to look at, and it's going to be continue to be in the future, as I'll show you here. Jack Dorsey's Block commits to build an open Bitcoin mining ecosystem. Block, the payments-focused company formerly known as Square, is officially throwing its hat into the Bitcoin mining game. So this is just goes to prove my point even more that um, you know, cryptocurrency. Not even my point. We'll get rid of that. <laughs> Cryptocurrency is going absolutely nowhere. Neither is the blockchain. Neither is any Bitcoin, Ethereum. Anything you hear about it, they might sound like foreign terms to you, but all of it is relevant. All of it has utility. And just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it's not going to continue to grow in an unprecedented manner. And this is why I kind of took this approach in the video of the legacy and the traditional financials into the more technological financials into the crypto finance which is you know decentralized finance is a massive movement movement and a lot of people made a lot of money last year off DeFi, and they're going to again in uh 2022 my opinion i think this will be a huge uh, DeFi year in crypto. I think 2022 will be the year of DeFi, just like 2021 was the year of NFTs. I think 2022 may be the metaverse, but it's kind of hard to say. That's more of, you know, um, that's not going to be really a fad. That's more of the way that the entire internet is moving. So that's, you know, that's in and of itself a whole different league of its own. Thank you guys if you made it to the end of this video and you know, I do all this for free. I, I actually love it. I, I love looking up this stuff, researching it and cryptocurrency, the stock market, everything about it is a huge passion of mine and I like being able to teach others and giving other people the opportunity to make money for themselves. It's very important to me. Um, I've always liked to help others so this is one way that I can do it in a way that I think will grow. And uh, if you can do your part and like the video, subscribe and share it, um, comment on the video, 
let's try to get this video a bunch of likes and try to grow the subscribers on this channel so we can get the YouTube algorithm to pick it up and we can really get this thing pumping. Thank you.